Hey guys, Booligan here with Booligan Shooting Sports. Today, I'm doing a quick look at a couple of projects that are currently in development. One of them is my own design. One of them is a design from a very talented other designer. Uh, first, we'll take a look at this guy, which is currently in beta on my uh, subscription website on Booligan Shooting Sports. Uh, we have a couple people printing this one and the results are coming in pretty good. I'm starting to rack up the round count on my particular build and thus far it's going quite well. Uh, I don't have a good name for this. This I've sort of taken it, taken to calling it the, you know, G1926, uh, but that's a terrible name and I think we can do better. What you basically have is a Glock pattern frame, obviously, that is 3D printed and it is a 19 length slide with a 26 length grip. Why would you ever want a 26 length grip on a 19? I don't know, because it's kind of fun to have things that are a little bit different sometimes. Um, practical reasons aside, the, the 26 grip is nice because you can fit every length of Glock magazine in there. Um, you know, because it is the shortest magwell, you can obviously fit a magazine from a, from a 26, from a 19, from a 17. You can do a, a Stendo in there. Uh, you could do a ridiculous extended one. It just opens up a couple more magazine um, options for you. Now, that's the practical reasons aside. The impractical reasons are just because I kind of like the look. I like the look of a short stubby grip on a little bit of a longer slide. Now, this particular one has an interesting feature up front here, which is optional for the build, but one that I really like. Um, it has a standoff device or a barricade rest, or some people call them a meat tenderizer, but this one isn't exactly, you know, angry little pointy bits at the end. But what it does, go ahead and lock that back. You see it's stationary up at the front. It sort of looks like a frame mounted compensator, but it's not. It doesn't have any design features to enhance compensation or, you know, reduce your muzzle flip. But what it does is it helps keep that slide from being pressed out of battery. Um, this is never a situation, realistically, that anybody's going to get into for the most part. I mean, if you are involved in a defensive shooting situation and you get in a scuffle with someone and it just so happens that your slide gets pushed out of battery a little bit, your gun won't fire. Um, and that could end up with you getting dead. Uh, so this prevents that from being pushed, that slide from being pushed out of battery because it is a physical barrier to the slide. The slide doesn't touch it. The barrel doesn't touch it. It kind of floats there in this little channel in the front. Um, but it does allow that to be a possible function is just to keep the slide from being knocked out of battery. Uh, why I put it on there is because I think it looks really cool. That's why I do so many things that I do. So many of my designs are kind of purely cosmetic, I hate to say, um, but it's just kind of a cool look for this thing, especially with the angles that match the angles on this uh, uh, Zafiri Precision slide on here. Just kind of an interesting, cool look. Um, but overall, uh, this is based on uh, the FMDA architecture. Uh, this one has uh, uh, Aves rails in it, I believe. I normally use Riptide rails for pretty much everything, but I ended up with a set of, uh, of Aves rails and put them in here. And it's, it's a tight fit. That's kind of a, a, a trademark of Aves rail design, but uh, it works quite well. Uh, so like I said, this guy is currently in beta on my uh, subscription site. We've got a couple of people printing them um, and we're just getting feedback on it and seeing any changes that need to happen to the design. The big one is obviously this printed uh, standoff device, making sure it stands up to durability testing. And thus far, this one has. It's kind of interesting. You notice it doesn't have any cross bolts in there. That would add extra bulk. Uh, instead, it screws in through the front. It's a very tight fit onto the rail itself. There's a standard Picatinny rail here. Uh, but it slides on and then is actually screwed in through two holes that are printed in the frame. Uh, however, those holes aren't visible if you don't have, if you don't drill them out a little bit first. I put a one millimeter skin on the front. So if you decide to print the frame, you like the frame shape, but you don't want to run this standoff device up front, 
uh, you don't have to, and it won't look like it was ever supposed to be there. So um, just kind of a nice little uh, feature, uh, depending on how you want to run the gun. So if you have any good suggestions for a name for this guy, go ahead, drop them in the comments, because the G1926 is boring, and we can do so much better than that. So this one is my design. This one is not my design. I'm part of the beta for this. Now this is a Beretta 9mm semi-automatic handgun. Uh, it's an M92 format pistol. And this is a 3D printed frame um, designed by Gerald Katz. Now he has designed some very cool frames. He has done a lot of work in the space of Berettas, doing things like I believe the Beretta Tomcat and a couple of other you know smaller caliber ones. Uh, but now we're branching out and doing the full 9mm one. Um, it is, as it currently sits, it is a standard frame shape. It doesn't do anything too crazy. It just looks like a normal Beretta M92. Um, however, I am me, and I cannot just let things be. I can't let them just you know, exist. So I always have to change them up. Now, this particular one that we're looking at, this is not a firing model. I printed this out of standard PLA just to do some measurements, just to check the fitment of various things. There are other people in the beta who have done uh, round counts on theirs. Uh, this is just my first print just to see where the interface issues may be, just to see what... Uh, hiccups there may be in assembly. I like to do that if I'm part of someone else's beta is oftentimes I'll just use super cheap basic PLA and print a very basic uh, version of it and then just kind of take my notes about what I would tweak and what I would change on that build um, or just any suggestions for it. So um, this is not kind of the current version and we're still obviously working on various iterations of this. Um, my plans are once we get through the beta process, which is being held on deterrence dispensed, once we get through that beta process, we all know where I'm going with this. Uh, we all know, it's not down here, it's up in my other safe, but we all know that I love Robocop. I have that, um, you know, the Robocop inspired frame for Glock 17Ls, as well as for FNS 40Ls and 9Ls for that matter. Um, but Robocop's Auto 9 is a Beretta. It's, it's a Beretta 93R. I don't exactly have one of those. But um, I am working on doing a Auto 9 inspired version of this. So it would be a basic frame with a couple of changes to the frame itself, but then it would be an add-on front module uh, with a steel barrel liner going up front um, in order to not have, not require the use of like a five inch extended barrel, um, as well as not wanting to just do that strictly printed. You wanna have something better than just plastic to handle the full surround uh, muzzle blast. So, um, but it'll be just an add-on thing here on the front that just makes it resemble the Auto 9 from Robocop. So that's kind of in my, on my plan list for this guy. Um, also doing a frame from Equilibrium, those use Berettas as well. And they had kind of a cool design with like a forward slant on the dust cover. Uh, I really like that design and I wanna do some stuff with that too. So, uh, but just wanted to kind of just show off what is possible here with 3D printing. You know, if you would have told me a couple years ago that a 3D printed functional Beretta M92 frame uh, were possible, I would tell you, no, it's it's absolutely not. We're not able to do stuff like that. Um, but thanks to awesome designers like Gerald Katz, uh, we are getting able to do that and very, very soon. So uh, stay tuned for more updates on this guy. Stay tuned for a formal release on this guy. This guy will be released pretty soon. Uh, other cool stuff that was released, my uh, test mule, of the Halo Magnum, which I finally broke the slide cover uh, in a very strange way. I broke the slide cover not by shooting it. That guy's got a couple hundred rounds through it, but I broke the slide cover in a way by uh, dropping the slide and it hit in just the way that it lifted and delaminated, which is kind of weird. So we'll let that 
sit there with that piece missing. But we have uh, released the Halo Magnum, Halo Magnum uh, frame and slide cover and uh, rear plug extension is live on my Odyssey page. So if you want to print a Glock 19 based Halo Magnum, you can go do that now. Um, those files, you know, my completed files as always are free. So get out there and get to printing. Uh, but in the meantime, stay tuned for more, you know, cool stuff on these and all of these other ridiculous projects kind of taking up my workbench. And as always, thanks for watching.